This is some excellent reporting from DC UK because in Keir Starmer you have the emergence of a another globalist. In the release of Julian Assange you have a potential victory for free speech. And if Julian Assange can be freed after revealing the corruption of the international establishment, perhaps all independent journalists, perhaps all independent thinkers might come together and apply our shared inquisitiveness, our shared spirit of inquiry to, well, 9-11, the pandemic period, the kind of things we talk about all the time. Perhaps it's possible that the truth may burst forth the way that Julian Assange's liberty has punctured the bubble of totalitarianism. So the reason it's important to look at a figure like Keir Starmer is not because I think he's evil, but actually the opposite. I think he's kind of neutral and potentially simply a tool of the very same kind of establishment that puts figures like Rishi Sunak into positions of power. So let's have a look at this story and look at Keir Starmer's connection to Julian Assange and the United States of America. Fascinating. The Crown Prosecution Service, England and Wales's public prosecutor, has deleted all records of its former head, Keir Starmer's trips to the US, it can be revealed. This is, that will be their statement. It's perfectly normal, standard practice to delete all of that. It's just standard practice that we've deleted all of that. It's standard practice to survey people online. It's standard practice to deem, amplify and censor true information online. It's standard practice to control you. It's standard practice to move towards authoritarianism. It's standard practice to hold elections that don't mean anything, where you can choose anyone as long as it's these two people that we already control and these two institutions that are already corrupted by their finance models. It's standard practice. Well, have you considered that maybe we need new standards. Yes, that's exactly what we're considering right now. Starmer served as Director of Public Prosecutions from 2008 to 2013, a period when the body was overseeing Julian Assange's proposed extradition to Sweden, where Hillary Clinton, by the way, was saying, why can't we just drone this guy? Hillary Clinton was suggesting just murdering him, as was Mike Pompeo, the head of the CIA. Yo, he was similarly suggesting, why don't we just execute him? Well, thank God that man who's currently in Australia with his wife and kids wasn't murdered because he was inconvenient to the establishment. Remember, remember, Whoever it is you're thinking about voting for, whether it's next month or in a few months, I don't remember any leading public politician, so I can think of a few notable people on the left in our country, that came out and said, hey, this dude, Julian Assange, he should not be in jail. Did Barack Obama say that? Did he? Did Donald Trump say that? Did he? You tell me. You might have seen it. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Did Keir Starmer say it? I don't know. Did he? Who said it? Because if they didn't say it, you know what side they're on. During Starmer's time in the post, the CPS was marred by irregularities surrounding the case of the WikiLeaks founder. Notice how they have to use even this investigative organisation that you've got to assume is legit and on it because they're reporting on an important story right here for sure. They say, oh, it's an irregularity. It's just an irregularity. It's pretty, well, I suppose because they're being responsible rather than hyperbolic in their in their reporting. But hey, man, we've got to get some energy going, don't we? Do we need to get some energy going or should we just lethargically just be ushered in <laughs> to a new... Oh, Oh, look, I'm enjoying this new pastel shade of tyranny we voted for this week. Oh, this is nice. This new um, bureaucrat tyrant's got a nice haircut, I notice. I like the nasal voice of this one. Oh, I like it when we get a different colour one. Oh, I like it when we have a woman one. Isn't it wonderful? The different hues and shades and genders of tyranny that we're free to choose as long as we never expose or question the deep, deep homogeneity that is just below the surface of the apparent diversity true diversity, true tribal freedom, true individual sovereignty, true decentralisation. CPS was marred by irregularities surrounding the case of the WikiLeaks founder. The organisation has admitted to destroying, <laughs> destroying key emails related to the Assange case, mostly covering the period when Starmer was in charge, while the CPS lawyer overseeing the case advised the Swedes in 2010 or 2011 not to visit London to interview Assange. An interview at that time could have prevented the long-running embassy standoff. This is, of course, a reference to the fact that Julian Assange was, at the inauguration of his persecution, accused of sex crimes in Sweden. We all remember that, of course. Assange and WikiLeaks began publishing classified US diplomatic cases in alliance with some of the world's largest newspapers in November 2010 in the same month. Sweden issued an international arrest warrant for Assange over allegations of sexual misconduct, leading to a protracted legal battle in which the CPS was heavily involved. I'd like to know what Keir Starmer has to say on that subject 
right now. What are the redacted, deleted emails? What are the visits to Washington? What is his position on Julian Assange? Is he happy that Julian Assange is free now? Does he recognize that Julian Assange would never have been imprisoned in the first place? For one thing, he never had a trial, except for, of course, a trial by media, which seems to be a way that many dissenting voices can be attacked and undermined these days. We've seen it time and time again. But while there is no longer any official record of what Starmer did on these four trips on the British side, some information has come to light on the US side. US records show that on the 9th of November 2011, the US Attorney General Eric Holder met with Starmer at his office at the US Department of Justice, the DOJ, for 45 minutes. Starmer's CPS was then handling Assange's proposed extradition to Sweden. Declassified has previously shown that the UK Home Office deployed eight staff on the secret operation to seize Assange from his asylum at the Ecuadorian Embassy in London. This was a highly irregular move as Ecuador is a friendly country and the asylum is a right enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I visited Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian Embassy during that period. He was obviously extremely weary, exhausted from what he was carrying, perhaps even having an understanding of what trials and challenges were yet to come. It was curious to meet him there. I looked around that Ecuadorian embassy and at the time reflected on the ludicrousness that there were oases and sanctuaries to be found in the sort of same actual territory in which he was being persecuted. We were literally in London, but in that building in London, they couldn't get him like you're playing tag or hide and seek and you're in the base. It just made me recognize how temporal and abstract some principles actually are. I'm not suggesting there aren't universals, but it is peculiar to know that Julian Assange found himself in sanctuary for that moment. He slept behind a bookcase in a corner and I asked, oh, can I see that? He goes, no, that's where I sleep. That's the last bit of privacy that I've got left. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very very own 1775 coffee this is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had seriously good ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try it. Rumbles 1775 revolutionary coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favorite? It's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? You're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now. Pick up your first bag. Use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? Okay, back to the content. As Julian Assange himself shared, Mark Zuckerberg has become rich by selling your private data to massive corporations and potentially sharing it with governments. Certainly some of Edward Snowden's revelations seem to suggest that that's precisely the case. Big tech communications companies sharing our information is an extraordinary to learn that privacy in itself has become a kind of commodity, that technology is supercharging state and corporate power to the degree where new forms of authoritarianism are plainly on the horizon. No wonder then that people are looking to Britain first, America first, France first, Germany first, whatever nation first politicians to stop this incremental creep of corrupt power from swallowing us all up. Julian Assange went from the Ecuadorian embassy straight to Belmarsh without trial. Watch what our political leaders say now. Watch what Biden and Trump say in the debates. And watch what Keir Starmer eventually says, what Rishi Sunak says 
What are they going to do? Oh, he put American military... Per He's going to take the Mike Pence route through this. Is that route going to be available to him? I'm not sure anymore. I'm not sure. It will be fascinating. The CPS's lack of disclosure of documents related to Assange may raise suspicions of a cover-up. While Starmer was still in charge in April 2013, the CPS rejected Assange's request for the personal data it had on him because of the live matters still pending. I wonder why Assange wasn't given his legal right to access under the Freedom of Information Act to those documents. Do you want a government that's just sort of controlling you and censoring you and surveilling you? Is there an opportunity for you in the next election in your nation to vote against that? Are there independent candidates that say that you will run your own life? The government will be your servant. We will end lobbying. We will end donations. And we will ensure that you have as much power as possible. We will pull our countries out of foreign conflicts immediately. Let's stop this madness. Let's get out of these wars. Let's do whatever we can to improve your life, to start supporting infrastructure. That's the only function of government. You don't come for us to us for ideology. We've proven that we're ideologically bankrupt. You go to your God or your lack of God for ideology and we'll get on with making sure that the trash gets collected on time, that your streets are clean, that your schools are working, that you can get doctor appointments. We'll leave you alone and shut the fuck up, which is what we should have done a long time ago. Because when it comes to moral we got nothing really to offer, have we? Even GCHQ, the UK's largest spy agency, had granted Assange's request for the personal information it held on him, which revealed one of its intelligence officers calling the Swedish case a fit-up. What an astonishing revelation that was. Hillary Clinton, though, had some interesting views on it. This is uh, from Fox. Hillary Clinton inquired... Can't we just drone this guy? Well, thank God she couldn't just drone that guy. And whatever Keir Starmer, Hillary Clinton knew or didn't know, whatever these globalist figures, interchangeable in my view, who seem to enter public life relatively poor, leave public life pretty goddamn rich, seem to have another angle. I don't know how it works. I'm just another person trying to make my way in this world. But Julian Assange's freedom and release has told us a lot about corruption. It's told us a lot about the opportunity obligations of independent journalism and independent journalists and it's told us a lot about the collective power we share whoever those of you were that were continually campaigning for Julian Assange's release you won the people in Australia the people in America people across the world that held faith at a difficult time I certainly can't claim to be among the number that held fast I was terrified when that dude started getting accused of sexual misconduct stuff I thought woof that looks pretty dangerous. It looks like they'll do anything to bring down anyone that dares to speak out against power. Julian Assange is an incomparable figure, perhaps, in the modern world when it comes to standing up to and exposing the corruption of authority. It's easy to forget how much he's informed us when it comes to matters of war, what he said about Afghanistan. The purpose is not to end the war, it's to sustain it, it's to drain tax money from public bases and to filter it into private hands. You can apply that to all of the wars that are going on right now. The the problem is Julian Assange remains relevant and now Julian Assange is free. And if he chooses to spend the rest of his life with his family and his children, then good luck to him. Good luck to him. And he deserves that. That should happen. But let us all remember the lesson of his example. Now, all of us have the opportunity to stand up as he did and oppose corruption and authority. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.